Hey, good morning. Um, today we're going to expand on the potential and kinetic energy formulas that we worked on last Thursday and Friday. So I'm going to review a little bit and then we'll jump right into some of the, the new idea of about them too. Okay. So first we look at the law of conservation of energy. Remember energy cannot be created or destroyed. It just transfers forms. And if you guys remember the simulation, potential and kinetic energy go like this. The amount of energy stays the same. They just change forms. All right. So that means the energy is always preserved and it just changes into like potential or kinetic. So any loss of potential energy becomes kinetic energy. Any loss of kinetic energy becomes potential energy. Okay. Um, in a closed system, energy cannot be added. In an open system, it can be added by doing work, but that's like if you um, put like a pot on a stove and there's no lid and that type of stuff, okay? We're not getting into that on this, this stuff. All right, so all objects have a combination of potential and kinetic energy. They equal one another somehow or another, okay? Because energy is never created or destroyed, energy just shifts between the two forms, all right? So your energy at the beginning equals your energy at the end, okay? That's the law of conservation of energy. So think about a roller coaster. Roller coasters always start off at the high point. They have something that pulls them up to the high point, and then it gives them enough potential energy to create enough velocity to transfer all the kinetic energy across all of this. And notice the kinetic energy just goes up and down here, okay? So when an object falls toward the ground, all that energy that was potential starts changing into kinetic energy, okay? Um, so then you can also look at that idea that potential energy at the top on my table, like the ball on top of my table, is going to equal the kinetic energy at the bottom. All right, so they just shift sides. Like the, remember this bar graph shifting up and down. So the roller coaster below is going to show a relationship between kinetic and potential. So potential energy 100, just give it a, an, an easy number. Right around the middle, it's 50, 50. And at the bottom, there's kinetic energy of 100. Then you go back up the top, you're still moving some, but it's still equal to 100 overall. So 75 to 25. And it's probably be 100, zero down here and that type of stuff. Okay, so it's making it easy. All right, so this is important. All right, so if we're talking about kinetic and potential energy equaling one another, the amounts of energy all equal overall energy. So based on the formula above, we can replace energies with their formulas. All right, so remember the, the formula for potential energy is mass times gravity times height. Remember the, the, uh, the formula for kinetic energy, one half times mass times velocity squared. Okay, so overall, if potential energy equals kinetic energy, then mass times gravity times height equals one half times mass times velocity squared. All right, so, so we know energy initial and energy at the final is the same. So then also potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is gonna equal potential energy final and potential and kinetic energy final. They all, it's, it's just different ways of using these two formulas together. They all equal the same things, okay? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna work on this section here, like the middle section, just, just the PE versus KE. Okay, so an example here would be using the conservation of energy. So if a broken iPad is thrown out a window that is three and a half meters tall, how fast would the iPad be moving just before it hits the ground? If the iPad has a mass of 1.5 kilograms, All right? So as it falls to the ground, potential energy turns into kinetic energy. So potential energy at the top and kinetic energy at the bottom. They equal each other. So mass times gravity times height. So the mass was 1.5 kilograms. Gravity is always 9.8 on our planet. And the height was 3.5. I'm going to equal one half times the mass again, 1.5, and we're trying to find velocity squared. So just use basic algebra, divide both sides by one half times 1.5, and that'll get velocity by itself. So you're going to end up with one and a half times 9.8 times 3.5, and then divide that by one half times one and a half. Okay, that's going to give you a number. Then that's going to give you a number in a square root. So you need to find this. You need to like find the square root of whatever the answer for your V two is. Okay. So when you find the answer, then you're going to do square root of that answer, and that will give you the answer in this case, which would be eight. So that probably ended up being like sixty four or something like that. All right. So that's what we're going to be working on. They're just plugging numbers in and using our algebra skills to show that kinetic and potential energy equal the same thing. Okay. Okay, this may be another example I could do on here. So yeah, here you go. So this is the one where like, if the 500 kilogram roller coaster starts out at the highest point, and when the roller coaster reaches the bottom of the track, it has a velocity of 15 meters per second. How high was the tallest point? So now we're just trying to find the height, and we're going to do all that stuff this, using the same idea here, and to get to a point where it equals 11 and a half meters off the ground. Okay. So um, when you use these skills on today's assignment, I will be posting the assignment. 
under today, and it's probably going to be due, due on Friday. But um, again, if you miss these activities or you miss the, um, the lecture day, use these notes. And we'll be covering this again today, tomorrow, possibly into Wednesday. And I think Wednesday we, we might start looking at power, okay? But um, 